Yeah, the coaches obviously can have very different Five roles. And sometimes you need someone who's better with the kind of team atmosphere, team psychology. Um, you know, maybe being a bit of a goon as well to so make sure people have fun and have a good time and can rebound from losses. Other times you need someone who's a bit more strategically focused or analytical. It kind of really depends on the, the team needs. The Dota 1 trend you mentioned is kind of interesting because last year I was also an old Dota 1 veteran. So is this is this a new trend? Is this a thing? Do the top teams have to go Bring find back. someone from Dota 1? Yep. We're, right. we're going to find out if we are going to have a fifth game to the series or if OG is going to be back-to-back -back champions right now. It is time for game four of the grand finals of the International. Game four beginning with the draft. I'm joined by Pilot and Gunner, but don't get too comfortable, all right? Pi, I got a question for you. If we were, if it was newbie grand finals and there was a lot of talk about coaches, mm. if AUI is like, I'm gonna give another TA another go, yeah. what would you be your, your, your reaction? Are you gonna be like, all right, you're the coach, you, you know what's best, or are you gonna be like, dude, this TA is really not working out? I mean, I would at least give him a minute to explain. Okay. Like, I, I would hope he would have a reason, you know? Like, and then I would listen to it, and then after that I would decide. But I would probably, like, I would not want to do it. That's how I'm feeling, like, right now. I'm not in the finals or anything, I'm not drafting here, but I, I just, I'm, I'm just not feeling that hero. Yeah, right and now. if we're trying to find symptoms of why Liquid are just getting obliterated in these past two games, it definitely seems like the Templar Assassin is not helping them. Yes. Uh, it just seems that it has too many bad matchups versus Thompson's favorite heroes that, like, run you over. Because uh, I can see the idea why they think it would be good, like all these traps to make it hard to run in. But if you lose your lane that bad, and it, it's also like affects, like you're, they're losing that lane and they're losing every other lane these past two games. And when you do that, like, I don't know, like, well, what do you do? It's just extremely hard to play. I think like you said, it's really not good against Thompson 2 4, right? Like TA, Thompson's not like a standard mid laner, right? I don't think you see him as this like TA, He's SF, very non storm, right? Yeah. You see him as this like Pugna, Monkey King, you know. Ember to an extent, right? And then and I guess Invoker, but even yeah, Invoker, that, stuff like that. Yeah. TA beats like all the standard heroes, so everyone's really used to playing against TA. And all his heroes are just good against TA. So it's like, like you said, it, he's just kind of used to, I'm pretty sure, just beating TA and TA. Yeah. Oh, and no. as we okay. see the first phase bans, what's the new change? Elder Titan gets banned out, and guess what slips through? It's the IO OG immediately snap it up. Yeah, they haven't lost, yeah. Pai, you were a victim of uh, some Ana oh, Isle. Right. What was that experience like? <laughs> no, it's, it's one of those, like, we th the game, was, we we're feeling pretty good. And then suddenly, like, uh, when that hero hits his timing, like 15 with Ags, like, you're, you're just dying. Like, you're just dying. And I think it's it's not very complicated to play for. Like, they don't really care how he does in lane. Like, they want to do fine. But then he's just farming jungle. Like, yeah. that's, that's all he does. And he has a very, like, he looks at a fight right He's like, if I want to be there, I click the spell and I'm there. If I don't want to be there, I'm just going to continue to farm. It's like, having, it. it's like having an alchemist combined with a specter in one hero. A, a, little, a little bit. Like, he doesn't farm that fast, but he farms, like, he doesn't farm that much slower than anyone else. And he has insane timings. His like, timings are just, like, better for the gold he gets than most other characters. Yeah. His 15 ags is, like... Yeah, it's, it's uh, probably the best 15 timing I think in the game right now. Probably. Now, if we're talking about our game, it was like they first pick ET, right? And I'm like, oh shit. Uh, I'm, the Wisp is in the pool. I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna pick Wisp. <laughs> and like everything, like I had thought about, like everything just looked weak. Like yeah, everything just felt oh, weak. And I'm like, yeah, but then you take a deep breath, you just go with whatever. And like, we, we can do this. And Liquid take a breath and they go for the Chen, which did bring them success yeah. in their first game. And they take the Omni Knight, which OG had picked earlier. <laughs> I'm a little surprised they didn't go for AA. I, I believe it's been banned out every game here, because like yeah, because uh, the Alchemist AA. Al 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 yeah, it's Alchemist. It's good versus it's pretty good versus Shen. Pretty good versus Omni Knight. I, I don't think OG will pick it here though. It's kind of awkward playing with a Wisp. They don't really have stuns either. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm hoping Liquid have like you know their last pick right, so they have like a lot of avenues opened up. Now, I'm a little scared right now of this Wisp because. Only a little. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so commonly... Wait, of this Wisps or for this Wisps? Of. Oh, okay. Because commonly you want like a hero that gets on top of this Wisp, right? Especially yep. that 15 timing. The scariest one is balls are max range. Yeah. Right. And he's able to like chase you and then you get slowed. So if you get a little closer, he pulls him in a little. Mm -hmm. And he stays at this like max range, basically. Neither of those heroes are full commit heroes, right? Right. The Omni can 
supplement like one if you're you have like ember say right he can go in with a grace and that's decent but these two are more like you want to fight and they want you to fight into them right they want you to find this chan of this omni for a lot of heal and i think that's what that's playing the wisps game right now this actually reminds me a bit uh liquid plays secret right yeah yeah and i believe secret picked wisp one of the games yes they did and it was one of those like, and Liquid had a similar like thing going on there with like a lot of heal and like they would push down buildings, and they just didn't let uh, Secret get to their timings. Like they they already had a Rax before Wisp was level 15. Wasn't that uh, was that the Meepo game though? Yeah, exactly. Yes, it was the Meepo so game. Meepo is banned out. Meepo's already gone. Yeah. So now I'm hoping. That's why I'm like I'm hoping they have something because you need this extreme like it just kills everything that's in front of it. So maybe a Leshrac or something like that? Lesh, Lesh is gone, ban. so... Yeah, which has been uh, yeah. consistently banning that. Yeah, because I don't want them to end up with the Lifestealers. Oh, yeah. I, I don't, I Other teams don't had tried the Lifestealer against the IO and it did not work. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's too slow, right? To yeah, like, yeah. you you get this Mightiest Radiance timing and you're still weaker than the, the Wisp. Yeah. And they also have to... Okay, there's a tiny pick, but Jarex has played it now, Thompson has played it, so they're probably, like... Hold on a bit. They'll see who plays it later. Because we played against the Bristleback mid with Iron, yeah. and that was that was spooky. That was that was frightening. The other like, ones they played are Gyro mid, yeah, Troll mid, mm. and Windrunner mid. So a bunch of these like attack speed or attack targets, I yeah. guess steroids kind of thing. So in the Secret versus Liquid game, that Team Secret had picked the IO. Liquid went for a Chen, a Tide Hunter, an Earth Spirit, a Leshrac, and a Meepo. Yeah. So the Meepo and Leshrac are banned out. Tidehunter's still available, but we're not enthusiastic about that so, hero. But Bristleback gets yeah. selected instead. This was Liquid versus... Or no, this was Secret Versus uh, Secret Vichy, versus. right? But they picked Omni Bristle versus the Elk. Yes. Yeah, and then they ran this Omni Bristle and they won the game in 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I hope that's what they're going for. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it. And they, I think they kind of stole it a bit from OG now too, the Bristle. Limited their options. Uh, OG had a Wisp, right, with it though? It was like Omni Bristle Wisp? Yes. That, that was way scary, but they have a Chen to kind of like... Yeah. Take place of the Wisp? Yeah. Oh, most likely a No-Tail about him. Yeah, because I feel like how the drafts are setting up, like Liquid actually have a chance here to... get a draft that they can end this game quickly with. What about a, a 3 Abba? Yeah? Are you late in against the Omni Knight? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's like something like that. I, I haven't really seen... I know that um, RNG played a lot of yeah. Abaddon. Some of the Chinese teams play it. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't look, look at a lot of Reapers still. I'm, I'm not really sure how strong is in lane or they, what his timing is. They go like 0 2 1. They, don't, they skip Miscoil early. And then they go early like Vlad Solar Crest and just kind of buff each other. Yeah, sometimes they'll just stay up, uh, straight up take Curse at 1 and just harass. Yeah, yeah, hit people. Yeah. So they picked Liquid Pick Earth Spirit, right? right? Last time they were against Wisp in right. the Seeker game. Yeah. yeah. So, they're. I think they're kind of like confident right, with what happened. I, I think. I think they're feeling pretty good right now. But they're still lacking the most important thing in that draft, in my opinion, which was the Lushrak and the Meepo. These are heroes that take structures yeah. during the downtime period, which Bristleback can kind of achieve that. Yeah. But he needs some levels in some farm. He's definitely much slower than a Meepo or a Lushrak. Yeah. So yeah. So the the last pick for Liquid is interesting. But at the, on the other hand, like they'll see OG's picks now and uh, yeah, Timbersaw. Timbersaw. So a hero that can deal with Bristleback, obviously yeah. if you have reactive armor then you're not too yeah. concerned about Quill Spray being spammed on you. Yeah, I mean for OG it's good that they picked this, because they need to buy time uh, when Liquid are running down lanes. Mm -hmm. so, like they can cut waves, spam out creep waves, so they, they need something like that. How does this Wisp uh, scale to like 30, 35, 40 minutes? Like, do you think OG, this OG game is never up? go late enough, <laughs> yeah. no, I, I have a feeling, like if, if Liquid don't have like a substantial advantage by like, Wisp hitting 15 mm -hmm. with Axe, I, I think this game is going to be really hard for them. It's just too much consistent damage without them being able to go on. Like they have an Abaddon just shielding this Wisp, right? Yeah, like, I feel, if, yeah. if it gets to that point, then Liquid are not ahead. I, I think this... We still have one more pick. Like maybe they'll pull something out. But how it's looking right now, like they, they need to get an advantage within the like, first 25, 20, 25 minutes. So even if the game's even at like, you know, 25 minutes, I think they'll lose, right? Yeah. Just, uh, I, I feel OG. What a great game. hero whispers these days. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, this is nothing new. Io being first phase picked is a very common thing in Dota 2 history. It's just that. not in this role, exactly. No, exactly. No, no, no. That's, that's the funny part. You, like, you're just first picking. Everyone knows it's your carry. This carry whisper right there. I mean, I don't think it's had this high of a winner, right? I think it has like maybe one loss. Yeah. I don't know. I remember like that. 
I think it was TI, when it was released, like TI3, I guess. Then it would I'm pretty sure the win rate was insane. The first TI that he showed up was it was pretty insane. Yeah. Even though it was uh, very Western biased, very few Chinese teams were doing. It. I think it was just E Home at the time with their tinies and stuff. Oh like yeah, that. that was like TI two, I think. And they yeah, won every game they played. That's that. right. Really? Yeah. But other teams were still sleeping on it. Yeah. But every single. That, that's one of the reasons why I considered Liquid. I had mentioned this on an earlier draft panel. Uh, earlier in the season, Liquid weren't looking too great, and it's because yeah. Io wasn't in captain's mode. Yeah. You, know, you you had a free ban against Liquid every single time. Yeah. Now it's a carry IO, which it's a brave new world. Uh, I mean, the funny, funny part about the carry IO is it's not some high skill cap. It's nothing like that. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It's very straightforward. It's you go, a, you go Bassy. Yeah. You buy your helmet dominator. Yep. You buy Ags. Mm -hmm. You buy Heart. Yeah. Win the game. And once you have Heart. You can ditch your hot creep and tether your mid laner. Yeah. Or your off laner. Which, that's a good question. So, do you think OG are going to look for someone to enable with their IO, like how they did the Bristol back in the past? Or is the dude self sufficient enough that if you have like the Tiny and the Timber Saw, that's the only partner you need? Yeah, I'm a little curious how they're thinking about the lanes here. I don't think Thompson plays Timber Saw. I haven't seen it before. So, it may have happened. I'm guessing this is an offlane temper so. Do you think there's any world where this wisp is oh, not a carry? Okay. Okay. Oh. Now there might be actually. I so. think okay. I think it's a mid gyro. Yeah. Okay. Offlane there's side lane timber versus this bristle bag. Yeah. And then a four tiny, a five ava. Yeah. Carry yeah one mana. Okay. That that sounds about what they would do. No, because I think if wisp is still viable as a four with gyro. Because that lane, yeah. if you play that right, it's really strong. Ten seconds. Or you can just let both of them be cores, yeah. and then it's really, really strong. Then, yeah, then it gets extra, extra spice. So Liquid needs a carrier or a mid, depending on what they want this bristle to do. OG is expecting it to be a mid because they banned yeah. the shadow so, fiend. I think the bristle gyro lane is actually decent for the bristle. Okay. So it's not going to be a templar assassin, but we'll go to another Weehawk yeah. classic. It would be the wind ranger. I like. I mean, I like the idea of the hero better. I don't know how good it is this, this game. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I actually don't think it's. <laughs> Good, but uh, like the idea is correct. Like you have spells that you can do something. It has a, a lot of damage that they can actually kill the wisp at the yeah. start, right? Even through shield, I think. Uh, wisp is killable if the winner has like you know MKB BKB. Right. You can't really stop them. It obviously doesn't really go MKB either for the evasion. So it's rare, but I guess in a also in a traditional sense, like IO being tethered to another unit gives potential shackle target stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But this is the last potential game for Team Liquid. Will they be able to stay in this grand final bracket? Maybe Purge can give a little bit more explanation as we pass to him with the last word. If you guys are just getting here, Io is the carry that has been dominating the tournament, at least one of them. And Liquid gets a chance to see if they can break it. But the downside is that they don't get the same heroes that they were able to use earlier to defeat it. Uh, so it's going to be a lot harder to beat it. So what they ended up doing instead is trying to abuse Chen. One of the benefits of Chen is that his aura increases the healing that any of his nearby allies or creeps give. And they're pairing that with another hero that can heal, Omni Knight. So those two guys can heal and buff up their strong tanky hero Bristleback and make him pretty close to unkillable. But on the other side, what OG is playing around with is uh, also pretty strong. They've got Io, they've got the Tiny, they've got uh, Abaddon who can also buff up, but most importantly they have Timbersaw. And Timbersaw here that has some flexibility in how effective he is, but most importantly his first skill will reduce the uh, strength or primary stat, and there's a lot of strength heroes over on the Liquid side, so it's very possible that Timber can run away with this game if he has a good match. Keep an eye on him. Without further ado, Game 4 of the TI Grand Finals. Let's start with the casters. Thank you, Purge. Game up at the moment in this best of five, two to one against Liquid. Their last two games, some of the most dominant performances we've seen from them from the entire tournament. Yep. In this game four, Liquid, they have had the chance to switch it up. We're not seeing the TA. We are going to be going back to the Weeha Wim Ranger. It is something a little different. It's something we know he's good at, but is it good enough to beat the OG IO, Giannis? They've definitely looked to go for something that's more early game centric. The last two drafts, they went for the Tidehunter, the TA, and the Chug or Tidehunter, TA, and Life Sealer. Very slow paced draft. This time, they get their Chen. They've been very good with the Chen, as we saw them also playing it earlier on today. They're very good at playing aggressive and making moves around the map, either with GH playing a Tusk or GH playing Earthspray. I feel like I always see them having one of these two combos with that Chen to make those moves around. And Bristleback, too. This is a very early paced hero, as we see the 
Ku as well as the spray get picked up at one and two, and you are pretty much the strongest here on the map when you have that. And we see them immediately set up with an aggro tri lane. They have a headdress on Kuroki for that extra health regen, and they really want to put the pressure to shut down Ana on the IO. Let's see if they can do it. We saw some scary, scary stats on the Ana IO loading yeah. into this game. He is 19 to 1 in the last 20 games he's played. And of course, here at TI, 5 and 0, no one has been able to beat him. Liquid are going to have to see if they can do it in their last chance here. Loto, this is the goo that we're talking about, that really strong level 1. Or are they going to actually be able to dive? No, he has a shield available, and they actually can. Doesn't have a salve on himself this time around, though, like he did in the last two games. And also, I believe with the carry IO, not every single time, but they did have an Elder Titan with it most of the times. Where that's where I feel like it helps a lot when you're playing into aggro lanes, because you cannot aggro tri lane into an Elder Titan most of the time. So this time it's going to be a bad one who's not nearly as strong as that ET. Oh, we'll see Liquid with that star. Able to make sure that the creep wave meets underneath the tower so they can get them a, a creep equilibrium in their favor. Very interesting to watch some of these other lanes. See how Weeha can get off to a start against the Topson mid gyro. He should have a. Have a decent shot here, right, in this 1v1? Yeah, he should be able to. He has higher base damage. Yeah. The thing about a gyrocopter is you have this godly animation. One of the best animations in the game that's absolutely instant on range And you have missiles, and you have a tiny who's going to constantly be oh. throwing Weeha back that's, into the tower. That's a lot of ants there, and it all looks to add up. They drag him back. He's got the point in the win run, looking for the body blocks, Jerex. Won't be able to quite get it entirely, but still able to get a good amount of damage done we to Weeha in mid. Has to be careful for that next toss back as we as Jarax is gonna go for it again. It is Jarax going deep behind the tower, seeing if he had the control. Up he goes with the toss. Topson closing in, Wim runs back online. As Weeha can hold his distance, but OG already getting incredibly aggressive in this middle lane. It's the way they like to play with the Jarax on the tiny. Just Run around, shut down the mid laner. Doesn't matter what hero it is, you're gonna be able to just throw him every single time he walks up for a toss. Weeha he gets his full salvo. I'm certainly seeing though down bottom, this tri lane, it is able to bring these heroes down pretty low. Obviously the question is if they can push them over the edge and get the kills, but the aggression certainly is there. And once the level twos come out for the three members of Liquid, we'll see that pressure amped up even more. Jax is going to come bottom. down. Now turn this duo into a tri lane from OG as Kuro pops the very fire, won't save him. Miss call from Notel, gets the kill. Now Anna's going to be the focus. Miracle and GH trying to get on top of him, but a quick body block from Notel and a shield handed over to Anna will mean that Liquid cannot chase any further. Just, just eyes on Jerex, right? Jerex is going to just move from lane to lane to lane, looking to just punish the aggressive tri lane of Liquid, as they can't really respond too well. Chan is not really a hero that wants to be moving around TPing at all. It's GH who has to respond to any types of ganks that Jerex does, and it doesn't feel nearly as good as an Earth Spirit. He's kind of limited on mana as well. So we sort of talked about the mid, talked about the bottom. This top lane, 1v1, Seb versus Mind Control, the Timber versus the Omni. What do we expect from this matchup? I haven't gotten to see this one too often, but I think that they're both going to just be able to farm. I think Seb might actually be able to fully mind control a bit. Just because you don't have to worry too much about your regen. While on uh, mind control, you have to worry about your mana sometimes. But I think they're both going to just end up trading, farming, pulling creep waves and whatnot like that. So, should be relatively even. No, definitely seeing that this pressure down bottom is continuing to make sure it's very hard for Anna to farm with the rolling onto no tail liquid. Take one out of the lane. Anna only being able to get four CS so far in this bottom lane. Already Liquid change up in draft and different approach. It's looking so much better here in the first three minutes of game four. Oh, for sure. 16 and 11 on Miracle, right? He's getting all these free last hits and denies. They are running this bottom lane perfectly. Keeping this tri lane advantage. Top is just manipulation of creep waves, because I think my control is starting to realize that if he stays toe to toe versus the Timber, he's going to have some problems. So he's cutting the wave. Bottom. Jerex is running over toward the area. He's only level one though, so still not having that stun available for the tiny just yet to go for those toss back into the tower and stun plays. And it looks like they will be constantly burning the mana of No Tail with this Seder Mind Stealer that is keeping him very low on mana. For Liquid, obviously interested to keep this pressure on, and then they have to find objectives with it. Anna at the island will have that comeback mechanic, sort of what, what, once he hits the level four, going into the jungle, using the spirit to farm those neutrals. So they've got to make as much as they can happen in this favorable lane setup that Liquid have. Another commitment on towards Anna, separating him from no -tail. He'll be able to tether himself back across, see if they can beat down through this overcharge. No-tail pops the stick charges, the spirits are out. Turn towards Miracle, but Mango's popped. He still 
has the mana to fight with. Another shield will hold them off. It really is a pretty fun lane, though, coming up with OG, right? He's like, oh, I just healed with IO, and the IO heals me. So they're going to be able to always do that and be able to remove all those boost stacks off with the shield as well. It's actually a really clever lane coming out. And he's even maxing or putting multiple points inside that miscoil for the health efficiency. He miscoils the IO and heals himself for even more because of that. Five minute runes come up. And OG, they want to try and tackle this three on three. No tail doing his best to draw their attention away. The Avalanche is out onto Miracle Jax. Trying to chase the other, but Liquid, they'll be able to grab both of them. Taking the Bouncy Runes away. Only the one going the way of OG up top. As Liquid continuing to look like this different approach to the lanes is certainly the answer they've been looking for. They're not killing them, though. They only killed No-Tail once because of how many stick charges they're getting fed down here. The Bristleback just constantly spamming the Quill, spamming the Goo. Everyone's sitting at, like, 10 stick charges every time they try to make an aggressive move. Now Miracle is up a bit, a bit far here. Jax. It's going to be able to make sure that Miracle cannot make the, the smooth run up towards the top and have a shield out for No-Tail. He may be low, but he's more than safe. Jarex with the toss-up. GH pops the stick charges. He's trying to escape No-Tail. Keep it on top of him. That Aphotic Shield's going to pop soon. He may not even need to. GH is running. One more right click on this coil out. That'll do it. The shield pops. They get the kill. And it does fall though. Liquid getting the trade. Nice step. He actually did not pop his magic one there. A bit too much damage coming out. I think the Alpha Wolf and the right click from the Chen caught him off guard how much it actually was there. But mid is the big one. These rotations from Jarex from earlier, Topson has a, over a full level advantage onto Weeha. He's, he's struggling. 34-13 to the 19 of 4. This animation and just getting that extra rate fed early really coming into play. And oh, bottom. Oh, roll up for GH, but a great toss, toss for Jarex. Keeps Anna on top of the Earth Spirit. Spirits are out, though. So the damage toss. looks like it may not be there unless they can keep the vision, and they can. Tossed in, stick charge pop, though. GH. He's got Miracle by his side. They won't be able to die for him and Liquid keep them all alive. But so they've, they've done a good job bottom of making sure that Miracle's farmed. Toxin though getting aggressive top onto my control. Should have Radiance chase this one, but there's a counter out of mana. They popped the shrine for some mana for the timber, but my control will be fine. Liquid being forced to use their bottom shrine too, because the one thing that they're doing, they were putting pressure on and they were getting good farm, but the sustain that's actually coming out from this bottom lane is just too much for them a bit here, as Ana is starting to get this farm built up to up to those 20 last hits. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. The mid lane seems to be the focus for Liquid. They've left Miracle alone. They're trying to collapse in onto Thompson. Thompson gets the cooldown off, but the Hellbear smashes in with the clap. Liquid making these moves around Kuro and his army. Getting the pressure on, catching out Topson mid. Got to keep, keep this tempo up. They're starting to really show that they have within them what OG's been bringing in the first seven minutes of the last two games. They can match this tempo. And look at Miracle, but down bottom, even pulling away these two heroes, even though they have do have all their wand, star, wand charges built up now to up to 17 as well. He is pushing them away from the creep wave. That double sustain though coming into play. Right to mid, another collapse in from Liquid as they look to dive in on Jarex. They get the kill. Thompson's gonna look to try and turn, keep himself on top of Kuro. Kuro. He has his army ready to tank some of the damage. Thompson is not gonna be able to get this kill by looks of it. Another one charge from Kuro keeps him back alive. The cooldown will be dropped, but Liquid they can get themselves out of range of it. They have so much damage in the mid lane right now for Liquid. With Weeha rushing that Javelin build, he's able to actually punch back onto Thompson pretty hard there every time he does commit forward for a kill. Gives a lot of time to Seb though, as they made that four-man rotation earlier. Now he's only up to level eight. He's got the max reactive armor. Same to be said though for Mind five. Control. We're seeing pretty much a continuation of an even far between yep. these offlaners. Yep. They're both getting exactly the same amount out of this top half of the map. But so far, no one else has been interested in coming over and Getting involved now, though, that will change. GH and Kuroki, they're looking towards Seb. Gonna bring in Weeha as well. Weeha, the focus fire. Have they got the control? There's the rolling with the stun. Shackle shot follow up from Weeha, along with the power shot. Will do it. Liquid. Making the maneuvers to put Seb's happy little time on that top lane to an end. Great use of the Divine Favor there from Kuroki to bring Weeha around freely and saving his TP. So he can constantly be able to move around the map if he has to respond to anything else. Very nice aggressive move, and that's the Javelin coming into play. Since it's magical damage, it's 100 bonus magical damage when you use that focus fire versus Timber. Who cares if he has 25 reactive armor stacks? They get themselves a decent amount of da uh, pressure on the tower too. Getting it down to about 700 HP right now. 
Sepp's going to come back in, make sure that tower doesn't fall too early. GH is already moving his way toward top. They don't have another Divine Favor to bring into the Wind Ranger. So it's, I feel like it's a hard kill without that damage that Weehar offers. Feels like an impossible kill without Weehar. <laughs> the three of them can only sort of sit beside and watch as Seb farms the wave under the tower. Yeah. See what their intentions are with this move. Ten minute runes are going to come up. See if Liquid can keep a favorable hold of them this time. Mid lane's going to be the focus. TP's coming immediately. He's shattered the shackle off, actually, before the missile connects. We are. He's able to turn right click into Jarex. He's tanking the tower to Jarex. Lines with the power shot. He's not going to be able to find it, though. Doesn't get the angle. And Jarex, he can continue to walk away. Liquid are chasing. And the power shot will be available in a second. Can we hit it? He's going to try. Not going to find it. Jarex, he's got the position to TP out behind the trees and will make it back to safety. But we hard does flip. They waste so much of their time there, and even a TP to protect Weeha. Which, what does that mean? That's just the space. This is what OG wants to do, right? Allow Ana to catch back up after he had a little bit of a rough laning start and get the Dominator, and the Dominator is finished now at this 10 minute mark. So that is where you really start to get enabled quite a lot of the IO to make your moves around the map. But Liquid, they're trying to keep the pressure going. Don't let OG get away with that greed that they're trying to pull off right now. Try to get some tower damage. Every single time a tower is going to start getting pressure, though, you'll see this rotation by Seth. He wants to make sure they don't actually get any of these towers too early. He doesn't have many reactive stacks built up just yet. But he will be okay. Mid lane Thompson. You see a dive hit from We Are. We Are trying to close in for the kill, but he didn't have the damage to bring Thompson down. Thompson was able to just drop the combos. We Are, he got in close range for that attempt. You gotta be careful as well. Ana, he's jungling in the area, so he can just easily tether up. I don't know if you guys use it, the overcharge around and catch at the end of it, but he can easily tether it and he can get a little bit of extra HP regen that comes with the players. Looking for Jerex. Jerex again. And then with the magnetize, TP's will now start to come into play. Thompson's here, Jerex still alive. They're trying their best to hunt him down through the trees. He'll be able to toss back the Hellbear Smasher. Rocket's dropped to keep the magnetize going. They'll get the kill on Jerex. So if they can find anything in return, OG Thompson is on top of Kuroki, GH, we are, we are joining the gang, they're surrounding Thompson with a divine favor, bring it, we are in, Liquid, they're going to be able to get both of them, Kuroki making these moves across the map, bringing in the team when required, and Kuro, he 3, 1 and 4, every single one of these 7 kills has been down to Kuro and his map movements. And his aggressive plays. And they're not expecting these these recalls. They're not expecting these divine favors at all. Every single time he's been able to set it up. And he's almost got a mech finished up on this Chen so early on. It's going to be a lot of burst heal. And like the pan draft panel mentioned, you look at Liquid's draft, and they're really trying to set the tempo. They're trying to be aggressive, get early towers down with this Chen, with this Bristleback, and try to get an early roast and get that big advantage to take advantage of carry IO. You have to try to take advantage of it somehow. They're waiting there on the high ground. They'll immediately burst through the aphotic shield. No tail. He's trying to run. The smash is after him. No test got the backup. Oh, Banner. Mind control's going to head in. Liquid, they're diving on forward. GH will be kept safe by the Heavenly Grace. Kuro heads over a little tip on this time. We'll be surrounded. The four of them take down Kuro, put an end to his reign across the map. As OG responding in their numbers now in that middle lane, they won't let Liquid get away with this any longer. They still, OG has a very strong way to fight, even in the early game. Even if they do have a greedy IO pick, it's what it provides you, especially when you have a gyro. Gyro is all about that early fight. It's the same thing with Tiny. And even Timbersoft, but Seb right now, we know he doesn't really want to show up except for the tower defenses. And he's also going to be matching that Chen, who's going to be an early mech. It's actually going to be a mech Timbersaw since they have IO. So this amount of sustain that could come out from OG pretty soon is going to be pretty hard for uh, Liquid to deal with this. Seb, he actually took the phone for GH. It goes deep. We are going to turn with the focus by Seb. Of course, he's got the max reactive armor. Thanks to that, Shackle won't lag. Seb, continue to back off. Chains out, back over the river. He's fine. Liquid will try and turn their attention towards Thompson, but with no tail by his side, they cannot dive up to the high ground. Seb, holding them back. Five Liquid heroes in the mid lane trying to brawl again at the same time as last game. It's 13 minutes in, and there's nine heroes, eight heroes positioned around this area. They want to go for no-till, but he's got ulti. Miracle's going to continue to chase this under the tissue, and they will get it. Seb is trying to turn. The missile is out on the courage. Does Seb have the burst? Not quite. Magnetizes is out, and Seb has to retreat. Shackle does latch Liquid. They've got the lockdown. They've got the roll for The kickback, they'll crush him. Liquid, they're diving again. They got a bit of a flavor of how OG was playing in his last two games, and they said we could do it too. Thompson plus the cooldown, they won't. They won't go too crazy, they'll let him live. They don't want to dive up towards the tier three, they know TPs are coming in. They have to make sure they're hitting the tower, because the side lanes are being split pushed. Ana as well as Jerex are actually pressuring these other two towers. They're 
they're not even going to get this one here. It's down into deny range. Ochi might just be able to deny that mid tower if they choose to do so. Liquid with an overzealous dive there, not losing anybody, but the side lanes giving a lot to that tiny as well as that IO. And we know this is the timing. It's all about just waiting for IO to get not only Aghanims, but get that level 15 talent. That's what Ochi wants. He's diving in. Onto Kuro with the flak as well, and the dog will not keep Jen alive today. GH. Not get TP out. Yeah, he actually TP's in and gets the toss off at the exact timing. OG's actually not done. As they are still hunting for action. Miracle, the focus. Thompson's got a DD. A power shot does come out. Lands on Thompson. A bit too aggressive there for Thompson. I'll throw down the call down just to clear the oh, Shaft actually reaches across the trees, but no tell. He's there with the shield. Thompson goes with the TP out. The focus finds it out. The damage Save. is not enough. Spray. Thompson save. A spray on the way out. Thompson will escape. Liquid, it's nine to six in their favor, but the net worth difference, it's pretty much even. As you say, sure, Liquid, they are bringing the aggression, finding the kills, but space is being given to those important members of OG. Yeah, especially Ana, halfway to that Aghanims already. Level 11 finished up. He's got the spirit supplied slow, so he can fight as soon as he has that Aghanims, of course, with the talent, but the big one is that 15, that extra spirit hero damage that does come out. But yeah, look at this immediately. Sam now positioned up top. He wants to push the top tower as soon as Liquid is positioned in mid. And Jarek's already looking to set up down toward the bottom lane. Liquid would have to just get these towers. Have to get some type of map advantage here. Once Anna has the Agonims, things are going to go, get, go start getting very tricky for Liquid when they turn up like this. Yeah. The That's Spirits have, will be out. Yeah, and they have Bristle. That's a good thing, right? Bristle can be good versus the IO. If you can get on top of him, the goo, you don't have the highest armor traditionally on the IO, but he's versus an actual counter. The Timber saw very good versus Bristle back at all stages. Are fortified. It's, just, it's just that farm game, OG. We've got mind control. Looking towards Seb up top, but it's, it's hard really for these heroes without the shackle shot. Or GH getting a, a beautiful angle. It's very hard for them to kill Seb. It's very hard for them to kill pretty much anybody if they don't have Wee Hot. If they yeah. can catch some of the supports and the you know running around by themselves, they can maybe pick them up, but they really need Wee Hot for the damage. The rest of them do not really provide that at this point of the game versus what they're against. Magnetic, you know, magnetize can be good, but there's a lot of ways that they can deal with it. Not only with the tankiness of how they are, but also there's an advantage we just remove it a lot of the times. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And so he could just get away with this, pushing yeah. this wave into the tier two every single time. Knowing that, sure, if Liquid do come for him, it's going to be so many of their resources that it's probably going to be worth it for OG to have Seb position that aggressively and for him to draw that much attention towards him. Topson's getting space, Anna's getting space. Look at that build by Topson. Defusal gyrocopter. Wait, what? Defusal? Gyrocopter, I just said it. Dress <laughs> defusal gyrocopter. Fancy that, Thompson so the, doing something that I don't, I don't think I've ever seen this. <laughs> it kind of, I mean, it's interesting because it's going to provide a lot of like, mana burn, which is going to be annoying for the... Okay. It gives you a lot of agility and it gives you ways to run around and chase heroes down, I guess. Uh, it's it's like different. They've got the kill squad, getting mobile again. They can transition this into a rush. DD rune on the Bristleback, they've got pipe. Yeah, they can easily do this one with the medallion as well. However... OG, they know what's going on. They can look to contest this as well as... Do they have the Aghanims finished up? It's almost there for Ana. And they're pinging it. They see, now they're aware of it, but it looks like it's almost too low for them to contest with all this minus armor. As look, we'll get away with this one. Let's see what they can do with it. Aegis Pipe, they have those early tools to start making moves. Start looking towards some of these tier two towers. I Ags think. is complete now on the IO. So Ags IO finished, and we're about to hit 20 minutes. So I'm assuming that OG's gonna buy the tome, give it to that IO so he gets the extra spirit damage. Liquid, they gotta group, they gotta group up and try to get something big here. They gotta catch out these backlines heroes. They really have to get on top of the IO with a nice shackle shot for we got to focus fire. They have to control and stun the IO. Hunting for Anna. I won't quite find, but definitely, yeah, thinking about it, this Diffusal Blade, I, I see what you mean, it, it does make sense, right? There is, you look at what, Miracle and Mind Control in particular. They're completely they, dependent on their mana. And they're dependent on the fights being drawn out, right? Yeah. They revel in situations where the fight continues. 
And sure, they can't kill them quickly necessarily, OG, but Thompson, he can burn, he's going to take the matter away, and they're going to be essentially some of these useless, tanky targets on the front that and OG can then ignore and look for the more volatile kill. And he's acting as this like, super frontliner, and Bristleback is yeah. a hero that if you don't have mana, you don't have damage. So if he's just going to be burning the Bristle, I, I can see yeah. it, you know, I can see it. And he's super far, and look how tanky he is, 2,000 HP on the gyro. There's going to be an MKB finish now for Weeha, so his damage is going to be very high. His set's getting slowed down. He's got three available, but he's getting burst. I mean, they're bringing him low. He's got the shield. Now, they'll be able to turn. Cooldown's dropped down by Thompson. And here we have it. Beautiful. Manus gone. He's able to pop the stick, get it a fair bit of it back, and he's able to head back in, pushing OG. Back behind the racks. They're getting a good amount of damage onto this tier 3 tower. They quit. They push up. On Io, that spirit hero damage is there now. But they're going to join the fray finally. There we have it. Miracle's mana is pretty much entirely gone. My top is supposed to look for GG. They can't get out of the mana. GH, he's dead. And now OG, they have that numbers advantage for this defense. They'll try and change them on. Thompson, one for high bridge miracle now. There's the shackle tower around. They're looking for Jarek. Jarek's backing away. Thompson focusing Miracle. Miracle's still out of mana because of this defense. Jarek, Jarek, he's able to call the corner. Try and look for more potentially. There's only the ones. He he gets the back top. Thompson, he's on top of Kuro. Another corner and then the toss back into the corner. Oh They're all getting picked apart as my control falls. Miracle is surrounded. And they're all there. They're going to get this as well. OG, they will hold. As and they're even taunting. They toss him to the dragon. Holy crap, Thompson, the Th defusal, the defusal is absolutely working for all their mana. But I don't think anyone would have expected to see Gyro, the deciding game, the defusal blade Gyro, it is perfect Look at for damage. this point of the match. He just did an insane amount of damage, front lines the entire time, and then Ana just has free reign to get all that spirit hero damage, and it's back completely the other way, and it feels like the control is just gone. Like, what what, you, what do you do well. when your mana's gone, what do you do? OG starting to take over the game completely here. Showing new ways to play the game at this incredibly late moment in the tournament. And now Thompson has an Agonyms as well, so not only is his regular hits going to be proccing that... <laughs> oh, yeah, he's going to be burning a lot of mana. And then just moving into the base now, OG. They're putting in, Flag Star support, they put back the Focus Miracle. Miracle, okay. hit himself, he's out of the way, the missile is out, the time on the heels to save him, but Miracle's dead, he's still oh, in the combat, Jax is in with the combat, that breaks out GH! GH has buyback, he'll buy back immediately, Weeha's gonna be back up in five, qualification is part, but OG, they're not going away. They're too healthy, they still have Greaves available for Sam as well this whole time, they're, they're pretty, like, no tail's kinda low, but once they pop those Greaves, everyone's gonna be topped off. And tier 3 is going down. 22 minutes again, and in a match where it looked like Liquid had the pace oh to maybe God. bring something different, but we're back to the same place that we were in Game 2 and Game 3. There's no stones for GH. He can't contribute anything. There's no magnetized either. They're just taking this racks. He's gone! They cannot get close to hold this! As OG, we'll see what the plan is next. No back off. They're happy with that, why not? They see. can back up, clean up strike, but I think if Liquid chases out, OG can definitely just turn and look for the fight. They have no cooldowns that they're waiting on. Everything is available for them. And they're just so farmed right now at this point in the game. That Liquid, wow. they're walking out together, but like I was mentioning before, there's one stone on GH, and that is it. So his team by potential, and he's pretty much the only team fighter on the side of Liquid right now. It's just not there. And now she's ready to go back. back. again, Jax into the river, the combo down to Mike Control, cool down there, Liquid out to back off. Again, Mike Control, man, it pretty much got He's able to pop the stick, get the GA off at least. Can they fight for the duration of it, though? They're getting towards Sam. Reels are pop, sends back pretty much up to four. Jax in with another combo on to Wheel. We are stand up. We are
LG is the best, best team in the world. They, they are on a completely no different question, level. No question. They are so far ahead of anybody else that plays this game for a living.